welcome back to another episode of Horror House. It's another midweek episode coming at you on a Wednesday. This past weekend, I and my lovely guest today had the pleasure of attending Grimfest uh, Horror, uh, Manchester's Horror Film Festival held every October. And uh, this was the second time uh, that I have been to the festival, but today we thought that we would do a nice recap in a top five style. If you have listened to the Purple Dawn Enlightenment Hour, you will know how top five styles work here. We alternate between uh, my five, guests five, my four, guests four, and on and on like that. But before we do get into the meat of today's episode please let me introduce my guest he he does everything around here uh to be fair and i'd like to say he is a he's my manchester based festival partner well yeah uh, yeah i mean we've got a bit of a good festival relationship going on i think we have uh started manchester film festival yep. earlier this year and this is only the second film festival we've done together I should say, this is Will Stevenson. Hello. By the way. Thank you for the lovely intro and thank you for letting me come on the Horror House. Absolutely. I'm very excited to do this. We've been trying to do this for We've, Yeah, ages. months now. And But we thought about a month ago, well, Grimfest, Perfect is, opportunity. Grimfest is coming up. Why don't we just do a nice recap of that? And that is exactly what we are doing, but as is customary mm. with first time guests Ooh. because will you are a first time and i've not prepped you for this no this is off the dome i've not prepped him for right. this at all but we asked the same question to every first time guest okay. on horror house it's an on the spot question i find it horrendously difficult <laughs> to answer which is why i like to ask it will what's your favorite horror film of all time i mean the mind my mind immediately goes to two um it's not two that's good which is halloween okay. the original john carpenter and kind of a generic answer, but The Shining. Okay, okay. Know, that, yeah. What I love about this question is that every... I, I don't think we've had the same answer twice. Really? I do not think anyone has answered that question twice the same That's, on Horror House, which is just There's wonderful. so many choices, though, isn't there? That's the thing, there's exactly. so many classics. That is. That just shows the wonderful variation yeah. of horror, I think, and why different people... Uh, Gravity, you know, different people. Gravity yeah, I mean, we saw that different things, don't we? It, even at Grimfest, do you know what I mean? Like, there's so much. I'm sure we'll get through it in our top five as well. There's going to be so much different stuff. Oh, just because I mean, there was stuff mm, that was yeah. in incredibly gory and intense. Uh, there was stuff that was really visceral, and there was some stuff that would, like barely even classes as a horror film. Yeah, so Definitely. there's a, such a wide church. Horror has got the most varied, yeah, output of of any genre, and it is why. It's why this show's on horror, because <laughs> I love horror, and it's called Horror House, and if we didn't talk about horror, it would be completely pointless. It'd it? just be called House. It'd just be called House, and that's <laughs> a very bad name for a podcast. It doesn't actually make any sense at all, but uh, enough with pointless <laughs> rambling uh, like we tend to do. I don't know if you've noticed, by the way, uh, carrying on rambling, of course, as I like to, that... Um, we are actually recording this from a somewhat professional studio. Yeah, look at that sound quality. It's uh, hopefully, now I don't necessarily know what it's going to end up like. Hopefully mm. this sounds pretty impressive. Uh, spe uh, well, more better than usual anyway. <laughs> because, um, but yeah, I mean, if this, if I like this studio, if this studio likes me, mm. I will try as much as I can to record future episodes of Horror House and Enlightenment Hour as well. Yeah. And try and get um, this studio booked out for that because I, I can I can already tell that it's kind of nice. Do you know what? I'm going to plug my own podcast as well while I'm here. Um, will, but will plug his own podcast straight away. <laughs> I was going to allow him to do this at the end, but he's doing it now. Um, when, we do, when we do guide dogs on bungee cords here... Um, it always puts me into this sort of mind frame, ready to go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Ready to ready to sort of talk about stuff, have a debate, and get in the zone. Yeah, this is... I'm sure this is unusual for people who actually listen to our house because 
a lot of them have been guests in my little circle mm. of uh, and I'm actually wearing headphones listening to myself. Yeah. What's going on? You sound lovely. Like a headphone. There's monitors in front of us. There's a big radio confusing. It's very confusing. Of us. I've got mics with big arms coming down in front of my face. It feels like the Schmoes show for those uh, who are familiar with Schmoes. But, like I said, enough mm. pointless rambling. Let's get into the meat of this episode. The top five list. And, like I said, we are going to start off with, Will, your number five. My number five is Better Watch Out. Better Watch Out is actually my number five really? as well. Really? Amazing. So how perfect. nice. That's perfect. Let's let's go on about that. Better Watch Out, weird Christmas horror film. Yeah, um, wasn't really the right sort of time frame to watch it, but as soon as we settled down in front of that screen and the, uh, the Christmassy song started ringing out, the yeah. snow fell, it put me right in the mood, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, it, what does it open? Yeah, I'm sure it opens with it joy to a, the world. It's a carol, yeah. Um, yeah, watching anything Christmas related, even if it is a horror, watching anything Christmas related in the start of October Very weird. is quite strange for me. And better watch out, it starts off as this quite sort of fun, nice little... Yeah, lightweight. Light slasher. Yeah. It's just, well, it feels like a slasher at first, doesn't it? And then it just goes really It's a down. bonkers twist. Um, and the thing is, you can't really talk too much about it because I want people to see that twist for their first, you know, yeah. with their own eyes. Um, but just bonkers, really. I mean, fun, I don't know if it's the right word, but. I was having fun at the yeah, start. It, yeah. Um, but then it does, take, does go to quite a dark place. Very dark place. I mean. Not that we're going to say anything no. here at all. That would ruin watching for most people. But uh, I know it did actually originally premiere last year, so we're seeing it quite late. Yeah, it was, um, it's an American film. It's actually got like actual actors in yeah, it. Yeah, well. Patrick Warburton. Patrick Warburton's in it. It's a very strong performance. Virginia Madsen's in it from Candyman. And and uh, Dacre Montgomery's in it from the new Power Rangers film, actually, as well. That is, yeah. Uh, he's like the boyfriend of the babysitter. Yeah. Basically, better watch out. Starts off as a babysitter and twelve-year-old boy uh, who are sort of in this sort of home invasion style yeah. type thing. Yeah. And then you know you feel like you know what you're getting, and with with a home invasion type thing, it's Christmas and it feels like Christmas, and the parents have gone out on a Christmas. It's a horror home alone. It's a horror home alone, it is. That's a very, very appropriate description. Uh, <laughs> horror home alone, I love it. Uh, but yeah, then it just takes this so unexpected, mm. dark... Per- like, it's sort of... It's an uncomfortable thing. Yeah, it, it is uncomfortable. Like- it's uncomfortable due to the actual... I, I did. I really like... I appreciate this. Um, the... the- the kids, it's a, it's a f- film focused on kids. Yeah. And is. they look their age. They, they, they really did. It, it's not like the scream phenomenon where you've got a bunch no. of teenagers who look about 25. No. They look their age. And the, the lead character, Luke, the, yeah. the, the sort of 12 year old, um, really strong performance. Really, I thought, really from strong. Levi Miller. Yeah, really, really strong. I, I, I feel like his face is familiar. Mm, I, I think that's just because a lot of sort of. But I can't. Twelve-year-olds exactly with that annoying smirk look like. <laughs> maybe it is. Maybe it is the twelve-year-old American actor. Yeah. Face. Perhaps we're onto something there. I don't know. But yeah, he gives like a startlingly impressive. Yeah, very, very good. Uh, performance and I see. I think it says something for the quality of films at Grimfest that Better Watch Out is both our number fives. Yeah. And agreed. We, we're we're say, we're we're Out keeping of, this much pressure. I mean, how many it? films would you say we saw? I know I saw a total of eleven. Yeah, I think I think I was I think I, I think was about nine right. or something like that. Yeah, because I saw I know I saw a couple that you didn't yeah. see, and you saw a couple that I yeah. didn't. It, see. it might be roughly the same. I have to count, but I'd, yeah, roughly the same. Still, eleven films. Grimfest twenty seventeen went on for four days. Four days. I think eleven mm. films or ten roughly. Mm. Um, it's pretty. Yeah, we did all right, didn't it's we? It's pretty impressive festival run. Yeah. Um, but yeah, better watch out. Conveniently, 
both are number mm. five. And I imagine that one will be easy enough to, to see for anyone that's interested in seeing oh, it because absolutely. there are big some some big names. It did have distribution as well at the, at the beginning. Yeah, it was, was it Universal? Universal, yeah. Universal. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, probably, probably the most accessible as yeah. well. I think yeah. just in terms of the style... Of yeah, it. it's not too, uh, it's not too indie or weird. Or yeah, it's not too weird because you do get some really yeah. weird <laughs> films at these festivals. But um, do you want to do your number four? It's not too that. I will get on to my number four. Now I'm expecting you to have this higher on your list. I think I know what it so is already. If if you do have it higher on your list, we'll wait until it gets to okay. the higher point okay. and you have it. But my number four is habit. Habit. Yeah, I, that's what I thought you were going to go for. Yeah. It, is, it is indeed. So. We will uh, we will wait until we get to yeah. that stage on Will's list to talk about habit because it's uh, a very worthwhile discussion. Will, so your number four. My number four is 68 Kill, which you didn't see. I did not see 68 Kill, please. Um, and I have it right here in front of me in the little booklet. Um, really, really fun um, Tarantino-esque right. thriller, uh, car chase movie, um, bloody as all hell. Uh, there are three main sort of femme fatale women in it and the lead uh, male, Chip, who starts off as this sort of meek, um, just gets on with his life, very, mm-hmm. you know, law-abiding citizen, not as in the movie, just a general law-abiding <laughs> citizen. Um, and he gets taken on this journey of chaos and, I mean, there's a lot. I mean, the, so the initial plot is that his uh, girlfriend wants to steal $68,000. Okay. Um, from the his from her uh, bloke that she sleeps with for money, okay. basically, um, and that obviously doesn't go fully to plan. People end up dead. They get end up with the money, and they end up on the run. Mm. The bloke Chip is freaked out by this. Fantastic performances, um, sort of ensure. There's it's hilarious. There's a lot of mm-hmm. fun in it. There's a lot of ridiculous. There's a lot of blood in it. Um, and yeah, really, really good. Um, for his winner of the Audience Award at South by Southwest Festival in America. Oh, ah, okay. So it's got a lot of critical acclaim behind it. Okay. And yeah, it's really, really worth checking out if anyone does get a chance to see it. 68 Kill, definitely recommend. I can't even remember why I didn't end up seeing this. I think you were reviewing something at the time. Uh, you was going. I had to catch up on reviews. Yeah. That's what I had to do. Um, yeah, that sound, it does sound like a hell of a lot of fun, though. It sounds like a proper violent romp. Yeah, really violent. I mean, really just very stylized. Um, yeah. Some great visuals. And again, a cast that's not unknown. Um, the One of the girlfriends in it was in A Girl Walks Home Alone. Okay. So okay. there is a bit of a horror past there. Nice. Um, yeah, no, a really very different tone from A Girl Walks Home Alone, but very much worth a, a see if anyone gets a chance. Awesome. Yeah, 68. 68 kill. Kill, sadly, one, I actually. Directed by Trent Hagar. Trent Hagar. Mm-hmm. What is Hagar? Just I don't know. It's a it's, 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 it sounds um, we have, we have Eastern a, European uh, or something. Thing here. Um, it is. It does say Trent Hagar or Hagar, Hagar maybe. Hagar, whatever. This is exciting podcast. No this idea. Is. This is the kind of <laughs> nonsense we get up to on Horror House. Believe me. Um, keep it casual. Keep it rambly. That's <laughs> the way forward. Um, okay, let's go. My number three, and my number three is one <sighs> that is difficult to talk about, but I, I felt it has to be put on here. I mean, mm. to put it as a favourite is different to say it was arguably the best made film at the festival, MFA. Yeah, uh, that's got a place on my honourable mentions. Um, MFA is, um, yeah, I, it's nobody's favourite film. Because you can't have fav- you can't enjoy watching films like MFA. I don't think it's too. Do you want to run through the premise? I will run through the premise. It's it's a uh, ultimately all you have to really know is it is a sort of sexual abuse revenge yeah. film. And again, it was kind of oddly appropriate timing for me to see this yeah. with what has been going on in the real Hollywood world over the past sort of week. Yeah, I mean, two cases now. Um, Don't want to get too bogged down in it. No, I don't want to delve into it at all, but obviously I think this makes MFA sort of hit 
Mm. In the same way that uh, Detroit did recently. Yeah, very, very much so. Um, Yeah, this girl called Noelle, she's Mm. an art student at a university in California. MFA Uni, I can't remember what it stands for. but Yeah, the film's called MFA. This uh, this girl is played by Clint Eastwood's daughter, Francesca. Mm. Very, very... Who, very uh, stunningly well performed really, as well. Really, really impressive performance. Mm. I, the performance of the festival, the performance yeah. of Grimfest for yeah. me, absolutely. Um, I said this in the vlog that I think you will see up tomorrow, if I'm getting scheduling right. <laughs> um, I said that she reminded me a lot of Kristen Ritter. Yeah, I can see because that. Because of the sort of not only in her appearance in the film yeah very similar even um, but sort of the character's attitude reminded me of I mean, Jessica Jones Jessica Jones is about a similar uh, uh, even subject matter yeah so there's it is. a lot to compare I mean that just sort of people know my feelings towards Kristen Ritter anyway <laughs> um, but uh, th- so that obviously sort of hit deeper for me Um and with what's been going on, it was just it just felt painfully, painfully real. It was literally like people in power yeah. not acting on yeah. sexual abuse victims' accusations. And do you know what? That uh, real is a good word for it, because despite it being a horror film, and this is refers to go back to what we were saying earlier, is that horror is a broad church. It yeah. felt, we both said, right after coming out, it felt more like a drama. Oh, absolutely. That happened absolutely. to have a bit of blood in it. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the true side of horror. Yeah, it is the true side of horror. There's no, there's no monsters I mean, in this everyone's... one. There's no ghosts in this one. There's no masked killers in yeah. this one. It's just very, very real, brutal. And the initial um, abuse scene, like, yeah. just really stood out to me. So there's you, you couldn't take your eyes away from, even though it was uh, no. I mean, difficult to watch. Some, some of this sort of style of films, whether it's. Even if you go as far back as Last House on the Left, Wes yeah. Craven's debut, 1972, Last House on the Left, some of it, um, in, a, in a sense, it's kind of the same because it is this just very real, uncomfortable style of film that's just brutal by the end. Mm. But even something like Last House on the Left can sometimes feel a bit... Well, it's exploitative. Yeah, it's more exploitative. MFA is not exploitative. MFA is the feminist last half, last half on the left. It is. That's a that's a very very good description. Yeah, I think because it is it is a rather sort of empowering film. Because yeah, she, she definitely after the original abuse, she sort of takes matters into her own hands, as is mm-hmm. often the case with things like this. She ends up killing people, basically, mm. um, but you know, killing sexual criminals yeah. basically and um but yeah the, and it sort of it helps her with her artwork as yeah well, which it's an, quite an interesting i'm not metaphor or yeah it was a nice sort of, it almost it felt like it felt like she was able to embrace a creativity yeah after this happened yeah which is kind of a very sort of dark thing but i mean I don't know. It was it. It came across as a a very very empowering film, and I mean, it's a it's a female director as well. It is. Uh, I didn't. I hadn't even actually Natalia, clocked that yet. But yeah, Natalia no, I think Lite? that adds a lot to it. Natalia Lite or Lite or well, who I'm not aware of. No, I'm not aware of either. But for I imagine for female directors to direct a film like this, mm. there's there's a reason behind wanting to. Yeah, and it, it doesn't have like to this. be a personal reason. It can be no. a larger, a, a, you know, address. So yeah, absolutely. So I, I, I mean, even credit. even without the the um, recent events that have been highly publicised, like, it's an American film. We're in Trump's America. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It works as a political film as well. Yeah, it, absolutely, absolutely. Very it, very well made. Anyway, it's, yeah. I mean, it's an appropriate film. It's a brutally real film. It's a wonderful, mm. wonderful film. Mm. And, uh, yeah, like I said, arguably the best made film of the festival, but it does come in at my number three for favourite. Yeah. Well, 
Your um, way on to your number My number three? three is Fake Blood. Fake Blood did not make my list, I'm no, afraid. No, really? I'm quite surprised uh, by that. But yes, Fake Blood was the Is It A Documentary, Is It A Mockumentary, Canadian, weird... Oh, whatever it was. <laughs> ...bizarre, no one quite knows what to think about it film. Fake Blood is a difficult film to talk about, um, but one that I really want to talk about. Go ahead, please. <laughs> um, so it centres on two... I mean, all the ca- it is presented in a documentary style. Yeah. Um, it centres on director Rob Grant and his friend Mike Kovac. Kovac? Kovac, I think. Yeah. And as they're, they're former horror directors, or they are, you know, horror they directors. They are horror directors. They've made, like, um, really low-budget sort of projects. Yeah. Um, zombie films, stuff like that. Yeah. And these are real films that you can go and buy on iTunes. Yeah. Um, which I intend to do, actually, to sort of get a better picture of Fake Blood. And... They intend to make a documentary about the impact of violence in cinema mm-hmm. um, due to making horror films and due to being sent a fan clip of someone reenacting one of the... Not violent, but reenacting a scene from their film. A, a, quite a disturbing scene. Yeah, I but think, without any real life. Yeah, I think this scene was... Uh, well, a, we could it, say what it is. Yeah, it was people going to a sort of big department store where well, you know yeah. where this helped anything and everything yeah. and buying tools power tools buying power tools uh, that they would use to cut up a, a body to yeah. dismember a body and get rid of it uh, like was in one of the, their films one of their films um, so it's like a shot for shot remake of them going to buy the tools to do the same thing and this freaked out uh, Grant and Kovac and they decided to start a documentary into the impact of violence all sounds fairly root and yep. routine um, until it very quickly um, changes pace. Until now, I think, and I spoke to, because Rob Grant was actually there yeah. afterwards, and I spoke to him afterwards just for a couple of minutes, and it seems like he was fully aware of what he was making himself look like in the mm. film, which is why it's very difficult to determine whether this a- it is actually a completely real documentary or yeah. a, a bit of a mockumentary as well yeah. because he does come off as with, well with the sort of don't want to say twist but change of pace that the film takes it does start as a how is movie violence different to yeah. real violence kind of thing and I'm sat there thinking I'm sure engaging. you're sat there thinking as well okay this yeah. is going to be interesting let's go to this oh god what's happening yeah I mean it, it I said quick change of pace, but actually, I, I don't think it. That's the right, quite the right word. Quick, it, it, it's not quick. It's uh, it's that one. You still, be, yeah, but you still believe up till for the majority of the film that oh, it is true, a documentary yeah. until that it is, does take some dives in the last sort of that is third. True. That is true, actually. Um, yeah. The basic. I don't want to because it's really interesting to watch. Um, it's so difficult to discuss yeah, these films sometimes. It is. And but basically, they interview real life criminals, um, and that comes back to bite them. Can it, we, we leave it at that? Yeah, let's leave it at that. I mean, this this one particular unnamed uh, mm. former criminal mm. that they interview for this documentary. Uh, see, you know, it turns out to be pretty dangerous. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just so and it changes more into a. Weirdly, a true crime. Yeah, it almost the thriller at and the end. I really didn't feel like it would take a true crime route, but getting back onto what I was saying about me speaking to yeah. Rob Grant, the director, um, afterwards, I told him I legitimately don't know whether to fear for your life or not. Yeah. And he just sort of smiled back at me as though he just said, well, that's great, as though he was trying to sort of <laughs> manipulate the audience. So I feel like almost that was his, was his goal, yeah. you know, to become you know, all this. I mean, it's it's just bizarre. Very, very, very well made. Um, and in in the film, he is the one uh, opposed to Mike Kovac, who sort of is dragged along, who takes it down this more true crime route. Yeah. He wants to inexplicably almost yeah. delve into these people's. And he, real interesting, lives. he's credited as he's credited as the director. It's not a co-direction between them. No, he's the director. Um, 
sort of, yeah, it's an unusual one. It's very difficult to see what's... I don't like the word mockumentary because that just makes you think of Spinal Tap or what we do in The Shadows. And True. It, true. It, it's not no, comedy at all. There's no... Com- yeah, it, 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 it's just... True crime is a better... It's not... A, I think maybe not mockumentary, maybe fictional documentary Yeah, is a better... Yeah, but, it, but definitely... I mean, he said before, um, you know... And when he came, as obviously Morgan was saying, he was actually there, Rob. At yes. The, and he said, I can't remember if it was in the um, Q&A before or after, um, but he said they almost didn't get licensed to show it. Yes, because yes he did. Because elements of it gave away bits of this, uh, this criminal's, criminal's life. life. And he was like, this criminal who is fully blurred out and name changed and absolutely different everything voice. in the film, different voice. Is sort of does come across with stuff he says as, you know, I do not want yeah. to be known by yeah. anyone, and it's like he does come across as this very sort of dangerous so, guy. I mean, just uh, yeah, that's all we can say really. That about is, fake all, blood, that is all we can say about fake blood. It is incredibly intriguing. Yeah, incredibly intriguing. But and it has a poster that doesn't really fit with. <laughs> yeah, it does. Wasn't the po- the poster seemed like a funny zombie yeah. movie. It almost did. That was it was a weird weird poster actually, just like the two of them covered in blood mm. that had absolutely nothing to do with mm. the actual film. Weird posters. <laughs> uh, okay, let's move. We're moving swiftly on here. I like this. We are not rambling at all. Maybe it's this studio. Maybe this. See, studio. Put, I told you, it puts you in the mood to podcast. Maybe this studio is helping me not ramble on too long and <laughs> p- produce a, a crisp Horror House episode for once in my life. Um, my number two, though, and we're getting into the yeah. the good stuff now, or as far, as far as I'm concerned. My number two is actually Double Date. Yeah, fantastic. Um, it's my number one. I'll it's say, your number yeah, one. It's my number one. Do you want to wait? Um, do you want to wait to talk about that? We for can do. One, it's up to you. I don't mind. Let's do that. What's next on your list? And then? my number two is Habit. Your number two is Habit. So Habit was my number four. Fantastic. Like, go on, Habit. Um, I mean, wow. Like, that's it, just a, a film target point blank shot at me, really. Um, I mean, <laughs> yes. it's set in Manchester. It's recorded in Manchester. Um, or it's filmed, rather, I should say, in Manchester. Um, some great performances from a lot of local accents. Yeah. Um, yeah. It just, a, again, a bizarre story. It starts off as this really social realist film for yeah. the first 20 odd minutes. Yeah. I mean, there's an opening flashback, there's a almost Lochian um, encounter outside of a, um, uh, like like a job, job centre. Center. Yeah. And it's it just, I mean, there's a lot of time spent in a pub, there's a lot of time. Yeah. It really, really creates. These characters' lives are something you buy into, you care about, without a hint of anything odd going on whatsoever. Absolutely. I mean, I think the um, the director who was actually the sort of yeah, he run the festival. He run he runs the festival basically. The director of this film, so obviously he's going to put his I know, I film did. as the first film. <laughs> I think that was there. a little bit cheeky. Um, yeah, that was weird. The you know guy behind the festival put his own film as the opening night one. Uh, worthy film though worthy film absolutely but uh yeah i think he he said it so he sort of almost wanted to create this sort of ken loach type mm. social drama and he did really effectively and he did and then i mean there's some great lovely gray shots of gray skies and metrolink flying by and that that just ooh. it just is manchester i know a lot of people that listen to this have never been to manchester don't know what manchester's mm. actually like but you know i'm from manchester you know this is this is um this is where we are recording this, so yeah. th- you don't see too many mank. You don't. You really don't. Films. You don't fit, see a lot of Manchester films in general. You don't. No, you don't. Uh, which is sort of what makes Habit even so more unique. special. Yeah, it feels like I don't see this. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go off on a bit of a tangent now. No, that's all right. But um, we settle down. I got the popcorn. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. Pick up, pick up that popcorn bucket, everyone. <laughs> Morgan's going off on another tangent. <laughs> Um, I most of the time like to I think the reason I like to watch films I think the reason I'm such a big film fan is because it takes me to a place where I've never been 
Hmm. Um, or if I have been there, it's like it shows me other parts of this. I'm like, oh, I'm familiar with yeah. the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. But, you know, I don't live in New York. But you've never seen it walk around like in but Ghostbusters. I've, no, I've not, actually. I've never seen it walk <laughs> around. Um, but something like Habit that is set on streets I walk down. Yeah. Um, Every day. Is strange to me. It's it's a strange experience mm. for me who has never actually watched a f- fictional film mm. set in a place he lives in. Yeah, I mean, I think that's true for the majority of people, though. I don't think, you know, unless you live in downtown New York or yeah. London. or But even the London of films is... N- Do you know, like, the Kingsman films, for example, there's mm-hmm. a lot of scenes set in London. But when I go to London, I don't feel like... Because it's just such a weird, over-the-top yeah. film. And this is in the second half of it, don't get me wrong. It, it, in, in, yeah, absolutely. But it it's, does begin in a really believable way. Yeah. And it's sort of... You can tell... Weird. I tell you can tell that Simeon is a local. Yes, Simeon is... Simeon Halligan is the director's yeah. name. Yes, you can. Absolutely. Which I really appreciate. Um, I think it gives the film a... Oh, I'm spending so long talking about this film, but I don't We care. can keep going, keep it's, going it's, on it. It's just, it's just amazing to me. Um, it just... Yeah, it just takes you on a real local journey. If someone had never been to Manchester, mm-hmm. I'd say this is a good way to get to know it. I'd say this and uh, Spike this, Island, another one. This is a good way to get to know Manchester with well, what happens in the second half. Yeah, but do you know what? The scenes that are set That'll in... They'll pop people off. No! Do you know what I mean, though? Like, I the, the neon and the way they make the nightlife look so I, appealing at first. I do. I know exactly what you mean. Is genuinely the way it does come across. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it does show nightlife in a very realistic sense. I'm not necessarily the biggest mm. nightlife kind of guy, but... I, I know what Manchester looks like at night, yeah. and it looks like what it looks, it looks like at habit. Beautiful at night, I think. As a as a, as, a, as an aside, it, and it's shot beautifully here. The it really use is. Of neon and the lights and everything flickering, really, really lovely visuals at night. It really is. I mean, and then we get into the second half. Yeah, of and we way. should discuss the second half of it because it's not it's not a, a spoiler as such. No, to say. no, not. Um, as a, I think it happens to near the beginning of the film yeah, to be a spoiler yeah and uh, it's based off a book as well by yeah. the same name of the same name um, and I won't go into a massive detail but basically um, the, the lead character Michael meets and quickly becomes adopted into a family unit of murdering cannibals of cannibals yes in Manchester, we have a... Yeah, that part's also a realistic. ...underworld circle of cannibals, and this <laughs> is why I've just said this will this film will actually not make people want to come to Manchester, because yeah. if they find themselves in the northern quarter at 2am on their own, <laughs> you, you, you and yeah, lured into that building, and yeah, murdered and eaten. It's presented so beautifully that you almost want to become a cannibal. I don't disagree with you. It, it's that's going to sound very weird. Are you going to people are going to think who's this bloke that you've got on your podcast? But <laughs> but if you watch this film, you will agree with me. It is shot amazingly. Yeah. It it it's presented. It does. It doesn't come across as as a gross. Can, no. uh, it, I've never sided with a cannibal in a film before, so it's a bit weird. I have sided with a cannibal in a film before. <laughs> Hannibal, Hannibal, you have my heart, my friend. Um, Not in Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. You were on his side. I'm always on Hannibal's I need to get out of a room. I'm locked in a room with you. <laughs> You're not locked. The door's well, up. Yeah, that's They're what you want me to think. Not locked. Maybe I'm locked. <laughs> it. Who knows? Maybe this is secretly one of the cannibals' rooms in Manchester <laughs> that, they, that they kill people in. Um, but yeah, it's sort of a beautifully artistic... Yeah. It, there's some re, there's some scenes of literal cannibalism yeah. that are so beautifully artistic yeah. and just like slow mo. Oh, this is nice. The soundtrack Everything adds to really it, nice. um, and there's that one scene. In, I think you're thinking of the same one I am, where it's Prongs. like a, the the body slithering over each other. The, the whole film, the whole frame is red. Like yeah. everybody's covered in blood. Yeah, yeah. The, the bodies wriggling over each other. Yeah. And it is just amazing. It's biblical. 
It is. It really is. And it's such a weird thing to say about a collection of cannibals. Yeah. It, it, in <laughs> Manchester. Bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. But, um, but yeah, I, I, was, I was really, really so fascinated by it and where, where it went. All, yeah. Like I said, all the more reason, because it is Mank. And I think the main actor, Elliot Langridge, I think his name is, yes. who wasn't actually... No, he wasn't. <laughs> wasn't actually Mank, wasn't actually from Manchester, did an impeccable job of yeah, his yeah. Mank Yeah, I mean, we, we thought he was until he started talking after. Yeah. And it, it just sort of... I, I went up to him after and said, well done on your accent, mate, because yeah. I really thought I you were... I think the majority of the rest of the cast were... Yeah, I think from so. Here. Um, there's one girl who used to be in Corrie, I think. It's Coronation Street for any soap fans <laughs> and um, Americans that may or may not know what Coronation Street yeah. is. Yeah, um, which is obviously local city yeah. at all. Um, Just yeah. across the bridge over somewhere yeah, we over can there. See it out of one of these windows. That's where we are. We're right close. Um, yeah, no, really, really fascinating, amazing. And I love Manchester, and there's a lot of. There's some really good indie music in the film. Yeah. There's some really bizarre scenes. There's just beautiful cinematography, fantastic acting. Just a great film. I, I do remember telling you as we I think as we were coming out of it, I think I could find that place. Yeah, if yeah. If I looked hard <laughs> enough in the northern quarter. Because mm. it is, you know Morgan's not convinced it's not a documentary. I'm not. I really I really, <laughs> I really hope I really hope there's a family unit of I mean there was multiple cannibals. I mean they were all set in sort of seedy establishments weren't they yeah they were so there was one in a there was one in brothel. A, a brothel there was one in a strip club a strip club uh, and the rest and taxis which is taxis, a lot less yeah. seedy but I got in a taxi the other day did you get uh, are you a cannibal now <laughs> yes ah no cool um, but yeah what else can we say about Habit? Please yeah. look out for it. That's all I can say. Uh, if you want a, if you want equally a very real life and kind of bizarre depiction yeah. of where I live, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, I will now. I will let you close out the list with your number one. Okay. Which was, if I'm right, Double Day. It was, yeah. So, actually, first of all... Do you want to do... Do we have any honourables? Yeah. Do we have any, yeah, any um, honourable mentions that one you don't... That we didn't get through. That we didn't get through, because... I can't remember. MFA was on your... Was MFA on your honourable? MFA list? was, and also Dave Made a Maze, which is another one you didn't There's see. There's another one I didn't see. Um, Which is just not... I mean, it's not even a horror film. It would probably have been rated... That if if not for the language in it, it would probably have been rated a 12. Really? It's a bizarre, funny... I mean, just utterly... Biz- so the concept is this bloke called Dave um, makes a maze. <laughs> 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 Which I'm sure you couldn't get from, you know, the title, but... Um, so he makes a, he makes a maze in his front room, right, of cardboard right. boxes, like a like a child, like he, I did yesterday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Except he gets lost in his maze, ah. in his front room, and it comes to life, and it's okay. Then he is uh, calling to the outside world. His girlfriend comes home, um, and he says, "Don't come in, don't come in," and she goes, "What do you mean, don't come in? It's some cardboard boxes. Mm-hmm. You come out." And he goes, I can't, I'm lost. I'm lost in the cardboard boxes. So the, he, she calls his friend. His friend has the same conversation, come in, I can't, blah, blah, blah. blah. And, and she, a media circus pops up. There's a hilarious really? cameo from some sort of, I think, Lithuanian, I think they call them tourists, who come just to see the maze. What? Um, and eventually end up inside it. There's a really funny moment with them later on. Um, what is this film? Like? So they, everyone, so the, the maze has come to life, um, and is obviously bigger. It's Tardis maze. It's bigger right. on the inside. Okay. And it's just, a, frankly, like I said to you, Spielbergian. Yeah. Um, and it, I mean that in a sort of uh, fun adventure, goony sort of way. Just, just sounds like it, <laughs> this show is called Horror House. Yes. 
It's not really a horror, horror film. film, no. Why was it shown? I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, if there's people, anyone who does want to see a nice action movie. People of Grimfest, why did you show I Dave really, Made a Maze? Because if it, if it wasn't a horror film. I really would like to know. <laughs> see what it says about it in this lovely booklet that we've I mean, got. You've got it as you've got it you see you see it was a perfectly it was fantastic perfectly good film. really really good film do you know what if if this wasn't a horror podcast and if it wasn't a horror festival it would probably be in my top five well, it was just so go. weirdly out of place there you go i mean it could have been streamed at manif obviously the fest weren't to before yes yes manchester international film festival and uh well honorable mention um for me in a similar sort of sense to Dave Made a Maze but quite unlike Dave Made a Maze Freehold yeah and I've considered putting that into mine as well Freehold which again wasn't really a horror film um, about a about a man who is living in the wall of another man's flat yeah. in London uh, that just it's the premise sounds like a horror Horrific, film yeah but the sort of execution of the film is almost comedic. I wouldn't say almost. I'd say it is. Um, I mean, I, d- to be fair, it's darkly comedic. It's darkly comedic. It's got a few I don't think it's something necessarily a, the majority of people would find funny. Because the idea, I explained the idea of it, and I explained it's a funny film to, to my mate, and they, they were like, how is that funny? I was like, yeah, yeah. but he's using his toothbrush and he's making him ill. I was like, oh, that sounds horrible. I mean, it was it was horrible. To be fair, it was like it is horrible. What, the the man who lived in the wall, was, was, he was kind of a horrible person to the guy who's yeah, flying. Yeah, it's an interesting um, moral debate, really. I mean, it is. so the the guy who's flat is is a um, high flying banker, city boy. He's like a real estate agent. Real estate yeah, agent, yeah. 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 No, not banker, sorry, but you know what I mean. The, that yes, type of yeah. person um, goes in wearing glamorous suits. He does. Comes home to his flat. Uh, he gets, you know, he lives on his own. Gets uh, a pizza, plays gets video games. Pizza, smokes weed. Does. Just chills out. He's yeah. a single lad. He is. His girlfriend eventually comes to stay. But it, it doesn't really. It's, that relationship's a bit odd. And the, But they're swiftly driven apart they are. by the bloke in the wall. Um, who no one knows is there. No, it, and so they end up... I mean, like I said to you, they're both fantastic dramatic actors, I thought. Uh, yeah, definitely. The performances are perfectly solid. Yeah. and But he eventually drives them apart by doing stuff like emptying all the conditioner bottles or, yeah. you know, uh, clip cut, cutting his tie in half and, yeah. and stuff like this. He does it out of, like, out of spite, spite. for... The type of person yeah. that the the guy I forget his name Hussein in, that Hussein is the real estate agent. He does it out of spite for the type of guy that Hussein is. Yeah, this and I couldn't guy. tell if there's a confrontation at the end. Is he meant to be the one that denied him a house, or is that? I couldn't tell either. A, I really, do, I really couldn't say. Otherwise, it's just like yeah. it might just be. I sort of saw that as just. Someone who is anti real estate this, agent. Yeah, yeah. Rather than. It's it a bit ambiguous. Exactly. Who say you know actually yeah. did it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's sort of oddly. It's bizarre. A bit bizarre, bizarre. as well. Moving at times, I thought. Yeah. Uh, a really good film, but like I said, not yeah. Not necessarily all out horror. And before we um, get to the finals, I've, I've, because of the short film that showed this, I wanted to ask if did you see any short films that stood out to you? Oh, um, the play before, and you don't have to remember the names or anything. But. Oh God, because um, I just the one that the one that played films. before um, Freehold. I really enjoyed Creeper. Oh, was that the about the Uber yeah, driver? Ah, yeah, yeah. Well, that the was taxi quite, ride chair. <laughs> that was quite. That was quite uncomfortable, actually. Yeah, and that film was very much what I was expecting Freehold to be. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think that's why they put it with it. Um, so it was a short ten-minute film um, about an Uber driver who follows him, follows this girl into her house after dropping her off, and doesn't do anything untoward, except <laughs> exist. He breaks in. He breaks in. He sets up a live stream. Live stream. And he, he gets into bed yeah. with her. He doesn't do anything. 
but he, he just sort of he's just live streaming yeah. him himself it's in staying there in bed with a sleeping yeah. girl he's just dropped off it's very and it gives you the impression that he's done this a few times oh yeah he's got a name for himself yeah. doing this this guy and it, it, to be fair the actor they got for that creepy looking guy I, do you know what I wanted to comment on this with Freehold as well both of the two totally totally extremely different looking people but both uncomfortable to look at yeah so the bloke in uh, Creeper was a what's the word well what it, there's a word for it but I can't remember what it is you mean like, a, like, an, like an albino yeah yeah I, I don't know if he was an albino he, was I very think he had very white blonde hair nobody had incredibly white skin as well he did maybe he was I thought he was. He, he looks is, Alpa, is, is Alpino a race? I don't think it's a race. It's At the risk of getting I know, yeah. completely <laughs> ridiculous in this episode. Um, let's move on from honourable. <laughs> and, um, well, my number two and your number one yes. was uh, double, double date. date. So, why don't we talk about that now? And why I'll don't talk we about talk about that? My number one. Which I think I know this. what it is. Oh, you, you'll, you'll know what it is. Um, so, Double Date, another one which shouldn't be too hard. In fact, I believe it comes out on Friday. Does it really? I, yeah, that's what their Twitter account le- would lead me to believe, yeah. Is that UK Cinemas? Th- I think so, yeah. Okay, UK UK Cinemas on Friday, Double Date. It might but, be a limited run, but I... It might uh, be out in the... No, it's, it's, it's a British film, so it won't be out in the yeah, US yet. But yeah. Americans look out for this as well. Um, so, Double Date is, as it sounds... Um, a, a very British film. A very British film. Um, hilarious, rompy, um, fun, stabathon. Yeah, just very entertaining. Wasn't yeah, it? it was just really, really entertaining to watch. Super entertaining. Um, it's got now for I know for a for maybe my generation of. British teenage girls. It's got the girl from Angus Thongs and Perfect yeah. Snogging, <laughs> um, who I've not seen in anything else but that. No, no, but uh, she gives a good performance she, in this. She does as the one of the villainesses. She does actually. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, except there's two guys. One's the basic premise is this guy, laddie guy, is trying to get his mate loop to lose his virginity before he turns thirty. Yeah, he's a very laddie guy. As very well, laddie. He's guy. hilarious. <laughs> he's very funny we, we all know this guy yeah exactly um, uh, I can't remember the name of the guy actually Alex Alex is, his name yeah. was yeah and I mean he's swearing every two minutes he's on about drinking he's <laughs> just really fun if we had a camera I'd uh, I'd do an impression yeah of, of, <laughs> the, of the kind of sort of movements he does yeah I mean there's a lot of shoulders uh, there's a lot of shoulders and there's a lot of flailing arms um, played by Michael Socker I believe I don't know how you pronounce that That's name. That's so true. Any, uh, anyway, um, but the lead character is Danny Morgan, who is Jim. Um, yeah, great performance. Really, really funny. A perfectly relatable human being. Yeah. Uh, he Especially for me. He does display a lot of stuff. Like Everyone can relate. So everyone knows someone like Jim. Yeah. And really funny, really out of his depth um, in a lot of stuff that quickly ensures or ensues in the film um, and the two the, the women are, are deliciously evil as well yeah I mean especially the the one sort of more dominant sister because they are they're sisters yeah um, I can't remember the actress's name but the character's yeah. name is Kitty Georgia Groom and Georgia Kelly Groom is Wenham. the girl Georgia Groom is the girl from Hang Hang Stone, Ke- Kelly Wenham then Kelly Wenham um, she is she acts as the sort of dominant sister like i said to georgia groom sort of do we really have to do this yeah it's like yes we do have to do this um what they are trying to do is lure men back to their house mm-hmm. in order to now get this because i didn't even <laughs> see this one coming either yeah this is they they are performing a blood sacrifice in order to resurrect their dead father <laughs> what yep in an otherwise what grounded gloriousness is that and it is otherwise really grounded as well yeah it is it's just this hilarious ridiculous I mean her performance is deliciously over the top like it's fantastically yeah. over the top she is just enjoying being evil and being like 
playing up the sexiness to lure them in in the first place, which is yeah. hilarious. And that has been something that, you know, the the female villain in horror has yeah. done for decades and uh, decades. In Double Date, it's done with a wink. It's done with it a is. knowing wink. They discuss it between each other. Yeah. Yeah, they do. It is... It is. It's just. It's. It's, it's funny. Yeah. It it's is funny. funny. It's entertaining. It's. It's a film you could stick on at night. Do you know Absolutely. what? You it, can put this on at any time. It doesn't yeah. require. This isn't a discredit to the film, but it doesn't require a lot of thought to watch. Yeah. It's just fun. It's just an an entertaining film, and it's a is a reason it's so high on yeah. both our lists. And you know, for me, uh, especially my sort of. I love the fact that it does take a blood sacrifice <laughs> turn. Yeah. Because I think if it had just ended with sort of them, uh, the two girls, you know, just getting rid of the, just killing the two guys yeah. and then getting arrested, I don't think it would have felt as sort of special. No, I, yeah, I agree, actually. I but agree. with the addition of this sort of supernatural element that yeah. Danny Morgan, who plays Jim, actually talked about and, and writes the film as well he we should mention. did write the film as well he actually talked about after the uh screening talk about how he was somewhat reluctant to put any supernatural elements yeah in it but ultimately he was pleased he did definitely a and good choice. definitely a good choice because i just think it takes it just to that one special additional level yep. that makes it stick in my head yeah, absolutely. And the, the highest praise I can give this is it reminded me so much of an Edgar Wright production. Not necessarily in the cinematography and style, but just Hot Fuzz, Shaun of the Dead is all over yeah. this. And Shaun of the Dead is one of my favourite films of all time. Yeah. Um, people um, just m- people who listen to Horror House and The Enlightenment Hour and are in my group of friends know exactly my feelings towards yeah. Edgar Wright. Um Maybe not what you're expecting. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm not the kind of guy who adores Edgar Wright. No, yeah, I do remember knowing that before. But I, uh, I enjoy yeah. Edgar Wright, but I, uh, people say he's a genius far too often for me. I mean, I disagree, but let's not get into <laughs> no, it. No, let's not get into that now. <laughs> I've had that discussion so, so it, many yeah, times exactly. with people. Um, but I, I understand what you mean when you say it yeah. felt like an Edgar Wright type it just the do you know I even thought the policeman at the end I thought he was Simon Pegg for a good 0.5 seconds I can't even remember the policeman at the, the end the, the bloke who arrests the girls it looks a lot like him oh I can't even picture and uh, there's, a, there's a, some various cameos in the rest of the film as well yeah, the big nasty the rapper uh, yes. makes a <laughs> he, just yeah. a very well done um, cameo he, he's just performing in a club and then the quick scene of him afterwards yeah and the bloke from McFly is apparently in it and all but I didn't spot him yeah, I think he was a one. Of, I think he was one of the girls' victims that I think you only saw on like CCTV uh, footage. Okay, um, so that's a that's a weird, yeah, cameo. Dude's clearly got connections for McFly fans out there. But uh, yeah, can't really say too much else about no, Double Date no. other than go and watch it. Yeah, please do. It comes great. out on Friday and I would love for it to be a success because the, the, the um, deserves to be a success. Deserves as a film and Danny seems like a really lovely bloke as well. Danny Morgan was a lovely guy. Yeah. Really nice guy. My number one. Oh, yes. Will, you didn't see this. Bally Rectory. It was Bally Rectory. Yeah, I thought it would be. You did not see. I'm so disappointed in you that you didn't see Wow. It. <laughs> That's a bit harsh, actually. Um... Do you know what? Because I, I feel you, like you, I'm going to be. You seriously did miss out. Yeah, I feel like I, I'm going to be upset by you, you going in on this. You did miss out. Right. Let's get warmed up for this. <laughs> Bally Rectory, one of the most creative films I think I've ever seen. Just the most bizarre, could not take my eyes off what was going on. Yeah. It is a storybook, it is a narrated tale of the most haunted house in England mm-hmm. Borley Rectory in Sussex I believe although it was demolished in the 40s this place but the land around it apparently to this still day haunted. is still haunted right. um, but so it's a true story it's a completely true okay. story um, the the sort of the narrative of it is just the tales of the rectory at Borley 
from like the mid 19th century up until the 30s and it's just almost told in this sort of recreation kind of style Julian Sands narrates it and it's just like uh, the Reverend Smith and his wife were commit were like resident at the rectory at Bawley from right. such and such year to such and such year and on March 31st of such and such year they heard some strange noises <laughs> recreation of that strange noise okay and but it was this all the actors in it are live live action obviously but it's filmed it was filmed all on green screen and then digital animation oh okay okay it was it, the the sets were completely animated but it had live what action what style of in animation them. i don't even know okay he just said it was digi- it was all just digital animation right. i'm not nec- i'm not so technical technically aware of no no but i, I, I just that. mean like how did it look visually is what it I mean. looked like cartoony no no because it was it was shot it was all in this flickery black and white sort right. of old school style um 30s 40s horror film right. style type thing and the director ashley thorpe said it would work well as a double feature with some sort of Right. Weird horror film from the forties, like Dead of Night or something right. like that. Um, but it's so difficult to explain the style because I've never seen a style like it. But mm. the best way I can do it is live action actors surrounded by a, an entire set of digital animation. Yeah, I mean that does sound it's shot in this shot in that flickery black and white that. And it's a very layered as well. It's not like, oh, they're in animation. You yeah. know, it's not. You can't tell that it's animated, other than when like some sort of ghostly thing <laughs> pops up, and it's just like, okay, and it's just like, yeah, I see you, ghost <laughs> in the corner, and but uh, this basically this paranormal investigator. Harry Price is sort of he's the basis of well he, he in real life in like the 20s mm. I think he conducted a load of investigations at the rectory at Bawley and this the film is sort of a tale like I said it's a tale of the paranormal at this house yeah and his investigations are a key sort of Part, element yeah. of it but it's not a it's not like a narrative film it's not a documentary and it's not a recreation but it's because it's it's comprised of like still photographs as well and this like i said storybook animation yeah where a literal book will open and it will be a, an animated set of ball directory with the narrator telling you what's going on okay so this sounds <laughs> it is just genius my question is your question do you think i mean clearly not because it's your number one film but do you think that was it more of a technical impressiveness that it left on you rather than anything else i think it was honestly the the, the feel of an old school horror film right was the most sort of uh, that's the bit that was stuck. what left the most impression on me yeah. was the fact that it it felt like okay it it could have been done in completely live action mm. but do you think it would have been worse if it was done I, in live I, action? I honestly do because the guy spent six years wow. animating this six years animating this he said in the q a afterwards that in some uh scenes uh actors would enter a room Hmm. in 2014 and leave a room in 2015 jesus christ because they could only shoot it was like they would not like a, a set shooting schedule it was just like when can we get a day in? yeah, yeah when yeah, can yeah. we get, get get a day in it has literally taken the guy six years to make and i believe so, I it, mean, it was only finished about three weeks ago that is the definition of a passion project isn't it? it is a passion project through and through and was the cinema busy the cinema was packed okay good it was a <laughs> thank packed. god for that guy it was a packed screening, um, and again, it sounded great as well. Mm. The sound design was 
phenomenal. Mm. Just imagine a haunted house film, you know, with all sort of creaks and yeah, yeah. ghostly whispers. And because in some scenes, the narrator will say, um, in such and such a year, on such and such a day, yeah. um, a an attempt to uh, speak to the the entities was made. It was like, can you hear me? Yeah, who, yeah, yeah. Who yeah. are you? And they're just like, yes. yes. So it's just like, and you you know, obviously in a cinema like that as well, you can hear it everywhere and it's just yeah. like, I'm loving this. Yeah. I was literally sat so wide-eyed just with a massive yeah. beam on my face. Oh, good, yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because yeah, yeah. people know my most of my favourite horror films are pre-1960. Yeah. So... <laughs> so to have is, that recaptured. To, it is. It was that very much recaptured. And this... The digital animation just makes it so much more impressive and so much more laid. You can tell there's yeah. just a load going on in corners of rooms. If it was shot traditionally, it would probably look like a 2017 film. Absolutely. Just because you can't get away from that now. Absolutely. I mean, even if it was shot in the same flickery yeah, black yeah, and white yeah, style. Yeah. I do want to bring up the, the title card oh, at the start as well because that was, you know, like how old horror films they would have a title card that mm. sort of flashed on and it mm. was in that weird slanted Bit font. Of font. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't just like... It didn't... The haunting ball, of... Ball yeah. rec- it didn't just say Bawley Rectory at the bottom. Yeah. It was just like... Bawley <laughs> <laughs> Rectory... <laughs> Yeah, which is obviously terrifying. It's James. It's like, oh, I can't even tell you. I do know that the actual real life rectory was the inspiration for uh, stuff like The Haunting. Yeah. And books like, well, what The Haunting was based off The Haunting of Hell, Hell House, House and yeah, yeah. The Legend of Hell House. Yeah. As well. So, so there's a lot of there's media. A lo- uh... lot of inspiration that c- have come that has come from. Bawley yeah. Rectory as the most haunted house in England. I would urge anyone who ever listens to this episode of Horror House to look up, to at least look up Bawley Rectory because I've, like I said before, I I can't think of a film that I've seen so much creativity amazing on screen before and it just captured everything that I love about horror. Yeah, wow. Um, I mean, that is quite a, a credit. It really did. Uh, I can't. I'm so. I'm just. I'm, I'm so upset. You. I feel like it. I could leave the room and you'd still be talking about it in I, half an hour. I would, but I can't do that. I'm just. I am. I'm legitimately no, I, upset. You know what, you I'm going it. to. I'm going to try and seek it out and watch it because you that, definitely should. I. I know it's doing. The well, Ashley Thorpe, the director, said he was going on a bit of a festival tour. I now. think quite a few of these are now. I and think just generally looking for distribution. Yeah. So. I think Habits going to Nottingham right. Horror Festival th- this week or next week. Right. For, I can't remember the name of the festival, but if you look up that, if there's any Nottingham listeners, anyone go to that. Anyone who just is feels intrigued by any of these films mm. we've talked about today, um, please, please seek them out and help fe- help films like this yeah. because you don't get this sort of creativity in mainstream film. No, and on that note, I, wa- I wanted to say uh, thank you for Laura Scott for hooking us up with Grimfest. Absolutely. Who let, us, who let us come in and have a lovely time. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, all all thank you. All yeah. the thanks yeah. to uh, to Laura and, all, and to everybody who ran Grimfest for putting on a yeah. great festival. Uh, much more films that were here this year than there were last year. Yeah much more and i loved my first time last year but this was yeah no it was really something special really really enjoyable really really was so yes guys i think that is going to just about wrap us up for this episode of horror house the grimfest 2017 rink uh recap i should say will do you have any plugs oh i've got so many plugs please plug away i've got so many um no like i said earlier we're on a, we're just about ending our hiatus but um returning with my news comedy um general opinion podcast uh guide dogs on bungee cords uh, with my mates 
we should have a new episode out by the end of the month, hopefully. Nice, nice. Um, then you can catch up with me. I'm at Will Reviews on pretty much every single social media. Um, I run a hip hop show on Shock Radio on Thursdays seven till eight. He it's doesn't a, even know what it's time. It's a new time. <laughs> it's a new time. Oh, okay. So I th- yeah, Thursday seven to eight. Um, that's that's pretty much it. I think he does a lot. I, I'm pretty much everywhere. He does a lot. Please, yes. please help me. Please, send me money at help. Will Reviews on well, PayPal. Don't That'll be nice. Send him money. You don't have to send him money. <laughs> send send m- m- money send for Morgan, Morgan, and I'll make sure he gets it. Don't don't do that. <laughs> Nobody has to do that, guys. If you did enjoy this episode, please share it around and tell people what you think. Tell us what you think. Uh, you can check me out on Twitter at the Purple Don. You can follow the podcast at Horror House Pod. Hashtag Horror House Pod. If you do want to talk about anything that we've talked about today, or just anything, basically, you can suggest guests for the future. You can suggest topics for the future that you want to see. What else can you do? You can, if you, you, are, can you can invite me back. You, I can invite Will back, for sure. Um, maybe I should get you on the Enlightenment Hour. We should do that. Soon. We should do that. I was thinking of, do you know what I was thinking about that? Have you done top five UK comedies? Is that films or TV? TV shows. I have not. We should do that. I would be very much down to do that. Let's do that. There we go. That's a future (laughs) Enlightenment Hour episode there for everyone. Guys, if you are on Apple Podcasts, I have to stop calling it iTunes because technically it's not called iTunes anymore. Uh, Please rate and review and do all that good stuff. And if you are on YouTube, sub to the channel for, uh, for plenty more from Horror House as well as the Enlightenment Hour and all the other stuff that sometimes goes on there but as we have come to the end of this episode thank you so much will for thank coming you. on thank you for giving me a platform i love just talking about stuff i love talking <laughs> about stuff as well that is why i do these things uh and guys of course as always thank you very much for watching and until next time goodbye